What's up guys, I'm here with my 92 Toyota pickup and I'm gonna change the wheel bearings, rotor, and brake pads on one of the front wheels. So stick around and you'll see it. All right guys, I'm just gonna give you a little tour of what we're looking at. So right here, I have my front passenger side, uh, basically wheel assembly, I don't know. Um, but I wanna change my wheel bearings, which are in this hub. And as you can see, the rotor is connected to the back of the hub. So the only way to change the rotor is by taking this hub out and either replacing the wheel bearings or resetting the old ones. So since I'm changing the wheel bearings and my rotors don't look too great, I'm gonna change the rotor too. Um, and then I'm also gonna change the brake pads since I'm doing a new rotor. So ultimately today I'm changing both wheel bearings, the wheel bearing seal, the brake rotor and the brake pads, and then I'm just gonna clean up everything else and put it all back together. I don't have a spring scale, which you're supposed to use um, to set the bearing, but I'm just gonna do it by hand. I've seen a lot of other people do that and it should be okay. So in the order of operations, the first thing I need to do is take the brake caliper off and then I'll need to take the dust cap off, take that nut off, and then the whole rotor and everything will come off the spindle. So because the bolts are back here, I'm just gonna turn my wheels to the left and that'll make it easier to get my impact driver back there and take those off. I believe they're 17 millimeter socket. All right, use a screwdriver and a hammer to take off the dust cap or a chisel. All right. Take off this cotter pin and the star cap. Now we need to take the washer out, don't lose that. The whole hub comes right off the spindle. I'm gonna clean off the spindle and check it for wear while I'm here. Just clean it off with some rags. Shop towels are better if you have them, I don't. All right guys, this is pretty obvious, but I just wanted to take a chance and uh, say that I'm not a professional mechanic. So if you have any suggestions, recommendations, resources, stuff that I'm doing wrong, let us know in the comments below so that we can avoid those mistakes in the future. All right, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is removing the old rotor and the old bearings. So what we need to do is take out these screws. I believe they're also seven, or no, they're 14 millimeter socket take these five bolts out and then we'll probably have to hit the rotor off of this because they're most likely stuck together then we're going to take the bearings out they just come out and then taking the bearing races out we'll have to pound them out and i don't have a tool for that so i just use a broken off screwdriver and i'll show you guys what i mean and then after that we're going to clean it all up and put the new races in and then start putting it all back together All right, you guys just saw that I took those out with an impact wrench, but if you don't have one of those, it works really well, but if you don't have one, take an extension or some other bar, and then you can use that with the wheel studs to torque against. All right, now we need to get the rotor off of the hub. The easiest way I found to do this is with a hammer. If you're reusing the rotors, don't do this. I'm not reusing the rotors, so this is totally fine if I ruin the rotor, I'm just recycling it. As you can tell, that was really stuck on there, so be prepared for that. If you're reusing your rotor, I'm not 100% sure how you'd get it off of there, but just know that it's that stuck probably. All right, now I'm just gonna use a bunch of paper towels and try to clean the grease out of the inside so I can make less of a mess while I'm taking these bearing races out. All 
All right, so I got this hub thing off of the rotor. I got the bearings out, and now that's all that's left to take out is that, which is a bearing race. And you can see one on the other side. I guess the bearing and seal are both on this side. So I need to take the bearing and seal out of this side and the bearing race. And then on this side, I need to take the bearing race out. So I'm gonna show you guys all of that right now. Let's get going. All right, on this side, to take the bearing race out, I'm just gonna try to pop it out with a screwdriver. All right, you guys saw it here first. Couldn't get it out with the screwdriver, so I used a crowbar. This old seal, we don't need that. So I'm just gonna set it aside. I'm also gonna take the old bearing out. Set those aside. Actually throw them away or recycle them. I'm just gonna clean up under this bearing. All right guys, so there's the bearing race on this side. There's the bearing race on this side, that little silver ring right there, and that little silver ring right there. We need to drive these out, and I don't have a tool to do it, so what I'm going to do is, um, let's see if you can see it. So you can kind of see it right here, there's four little grooves, like one right there, one right there-ish, one right there, one right there, where you can access the back of that ring. It's the same on this side. I'm just going to go around them, knocking them, and try to knock that ring out without ruining the hub at all. And I'm just using like an old broken screwdriver. If you have a punch, that might be better. If you have a specific tool for this, that'd probably be the best. All right, you guys can see that's slowly coming out. That's the wall it was pushed up against with the four grooves in it, so just keep doing that until this bearing race comes out. There it is. First bearing race came out. You can see where it seats back there. That's where we're going to put the new bearing race into eventually. First we need to take this other bearing race out, which is the same process, so I'll probably show less of that. And here's the old bearing race. Don't throw this away quite yet. Um, you might need it to install the new bearing race unless you have like a race bearing driver set. You can also rent the like bearing driver set at a, or bearing race driver set at like AutoZone or O'Reilly's. Uh, currently around me, they don't have any available. So I'll show you a little trick you can do without a driver set. I just got the inner bearing out or inner bearing race out. It's right there. You can see the outer or inner and outer spots where the new races are going to go. What I'm going to do before that is you can tell how dirty it is in there still. I'm just going to wire brush this whole thing down, spray it out with some brake cleaner, and try to clean it up as best as possible. So if you don't have a bearing driver set, um, the best way that I've found to do this, to reseat these, is you're going to take the old bearing race and grind it down. This one needs to be ground down a little bit further. You want it to be basically until all the letters are gone on the old bearing. And that'll just allow you to use this to press in the new bearing, and this one won't get stuck. If you don't grind it down, this one will get stuck in the hub, and then you're going to have two bearing races in there and no way to put the bearing in. Now I'm going to take the rear outer bearing. So you need an outer bearing, an inner bearing, and an inner bearing seal for the wheels on the, you know, 80, late 80s, early 90s Toyota pickup. Um, by the way, mine is two-wheel drive, so this is for the front on a two-wheel drive Toyota pickup. This is the rear outer seal. Uh, this is the front outer seal. So just so you guys know what I'm using. So I'm going to take this new one out of the package, and right now I just need the, the race, so I'm going to leave the bearing, try to leave the bearing in this little plastic so it doesn't get 
dirty. And then I got the new bearing race. So you can see it's kind of like a cone shape. We want to put it in um, with the kind of thicker side going towards the back. So I'm just going to put it right on there and start kind of working it in. And what I'm going to use is at first is a hammer and a wood block. All right, and that technique is only going to get you so far. Your bearing will probably be kind of crooked like mine is. So the next thing you want to do is get yourself a long zip tie. Just make a little loop out of it. I'm going to put this old bearing in it. And then I'm going to use that zip tie to line up the new bearing with the old bearing. So I can kind of hold it on there like that. And just start going around the edge, evenly tapping it until you get the bearing seated. All right, check out that progress. It's starting to go down. The zip tie really helps keep these aligned. That's the main reason I use it, but it's also like a good little handle for this once it gets a little farther in. Also, like I like using the skinnier side um, than the thicker side, so I, I hammer on the thicker side, and that's because this side is rounded, and this side is not really as rounded, so if you put it the skinnier side down facing the bearing, has less tendency to roll off or if you put it this way I think since the corners are rounded and you hammer it it wants to flip up kind of like a coin so I find it's better if you put the skinny side versus the skinny side of that all right now it's a little bit too far in to use my cable tie leash so I'm going black back to a block of wood but I still have the old bearing on there so I can press it in because you can see this new bearing is past the lip so a piece of wood by itself won't do anything anymore so I'm using this old bearing to press it in farther. All right, so you can see we're to the point where we're almost seated. I'm gonna get it fully seated and then I'm just gonna keep going around a few more times to make sure it's really in there. And there you go, it's fully seated. So now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. This is the inner bearing, and I'm using a WTA5. Again, this is for a late 80s, early 90s rear-wheel drive um, Toyota pickup, and I've got a two-wheel drive version. So front outer wheel or front inner wheel bearing, sorry, is this, and then we'll put the seal on, which is this part number. This is the inner bearing. This is the inner wheel bearing, and this is the inner wheel bearing seal that I'm using. All right, guys, so what I have here is the new rotor. Um, it doesn't have a part number on it, otherwise I'd show you what it is. But I'm going to put this new rotor onto the hub. And the way that this goes on is this side mates up like this. Um, so that goes on there and what I'm going to do because you guys saw how you know stuck on the old one was is I'm going to use a little bit of anti-seize and just put it on all these flat parts that mate so that next time I need to take the rotor off hopefully it's not as hard. Okay, so now that I've got any C's on here in the spots where it's going to touch the rotor, I'm just going to flop this onto here. Put back in the bolts. Each one has a lock washer. You guys just saw I tightened those with my impact wrench. I have no idea what the torque spec is on these, so I'm just going to use the old trick extension bar, socket 
crank them down pretty tight and hopefully they're good. All right, so go ahead and flip this over so we can see the inner bearing side. We're gonna clean it out one more time. I just really don't want any dirt in there with the bearing because it'll cause it to you know wear out early. Next, take the inner bearing, hold it this way so like the cone, cone side is upwards. And then we're gonna take a scoop of grease, put it on our palm, and work the grease into the bearings. You kind of want to like just scoop a little bit and press it in with your palm. And the goal is to get the grease to come up through the bearings like that and do that all the way around. All right, once it's fully packed with grease, take a little bit of your grease, go in here and put some on the race. You don't need a ton right here, just something that it's lubed all the way around. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our inner bearing and plop it in there. Since our hands are all greasy, I'm also gonna pack the outer bearing and just set this somewhere safe until you can use it. A lot of the time I'll just put it back in the grease jar or on the lid of the grease jar. But I just don't want to waste gloves or time, so I'm just going to pack this right now. Alright, once that's packed with grease, just leave it somewhere safe, like right there. Before I get rid of this glove, with the grease still on it, I'm going to take my seal out. Again, the seal number is right there. So I'm just going to take this seal out. I'm going to use some of this leftover grease to pack in around the seal. I don't know if this part is 100% necessary, but probably can't really hurt anything, right? So, Alright, this side that's packed full of grease, that goes on the inside. This goes on the outside. Plop it right there. Alright, and then we're going to gently tap that in with a piece of wood. Be sure not to get any grease or anything on your rotor. There you have it. Inner wheel bearing is in. The seal is in. Now this goes back on the spindle before the outer bearing goes in. So the next step is gonna be to grease up the inside of this. What they say is to build a couple dams of grease behind the bearings so that the grease can't come out of the bearings. Um, and then just fill up the middle with a decent amount. It was really full before. I'm not gonna fill it up that much, but let's get at it. All right, so just start taking some grease. Pack it in there behind where the bearings go. Again, don't get this on the rotors. So here's what's going down, guys. I got the spindle cleaned up. Make sure you clean back in here and everything. Um, I'm gonna re-grease it. I got my bearing grease out here. I'm going to put the rotor and hub back on. I'm going to put the outer bearing on, washer, nut, everything. And I'll show you how to set the uh, preload on the bearing. I don't exactly know how to do it. I mean, I know how to do it, but I don't have the right tools to do it. So I'll show you guys what I'm doing. I'm just going to grease the spindle up. Make sure to get it all the way back into here. All around on the bottom. Put this guy onto the spindle. Now we're going to need our outer bearing. Which will go in there. The washer. We'll put a little grease on the outside of that too. Why not? nut. One of the last greasy things I'm going to do is take this cotter and washer out and just pack a little bit of grease into here. 
I'm not sure if it's necessary, but both of my wheels were like that, so go ahead and do that. All right, so the repair manual I have says that you're supposed to tighten this to 25 foot-pounds to set the bearings, and then you rotate it in a forward motion. I don't have a socket this big, so I'm just using this adjustable wrench, and I'm going to tighten it up to 25-ish pounds, foot-pounds. I'm going to spin it a few times to set the bearings. And then basically what you want to do is whenever this nut is set where you want it to be, the force pulling on here is supposed to be like 4 to 12 pounds or something like that. I don't have a spring scale or a torque wrench, so I'm just kind of winging it. But I'm going to back this up off until this is around 10 pounds because I can kind of estimate that. feels right about in there and now we're gonna try to set this uh, star washer thing so here's the hole where the cotter pin needs to go through and this has a few different settings this one looks like it might be right I have to go a little bit tighter still feels good. Alright, now this hole lines up. I'm going to put my cotter pin back in. Double check this still. Yep, that's right about probably 10 pounds. But I guess. You should probably use a new cotter pin. I don't have one, so I'm using this old one and kind of just hoping that it doesn't break. But bend these around try to flatten them out so that the cotter pin doesn't move. I'm just going to triple check one last time. Oh yeah, that feels right about right about nice. All right. Cap goes back on. Just tap it on. And lastly, what I'm going to do is take care of these and I'm going to start by taking them apart and wire brushing this and the caliper. So, these brake, old brake pads just come out of here. These clips come out too. You can buy new clips. If you didn't buy new clips, you can probably just reuse these old ones. I have new ones, so I'm going to take these out. And then I'm just going to use a wire brush and go clean this. I'm going to use a couple Q-tips too and clean down in there and clean the bolts off and re-grease down in these holes, but I probably won't show that on camera. As you guys can probably tell, I turned my wheel back all the way to the left to give me more access so I put these calipers back in. The last thing I'm going to do before I put the caliper in is just take the opportunity to clean off these rotors one more time, just in case I got any grease on them. So, just a little brake clean, a little wipe down. Alright, now I'm just going to put this uh, first bracket back on. So what I did is I cleaned out these with some Q-tips. I re-greased in there with some Q-tips and then I just greased the little um, bushing thing so that it goes back into the other part of the caliper easier. Um, I also put some anti-seize on the back. So I'm gonna put this on and bolt it on right now. I don't know the torque specs for these so I'm just gonna go nice and tight. It's a 17 millimeter socket. start putting these little brackets on there's really only one way they can go on this guide thing goes to the outside and they're faced so for example this one goes here all right now that you got the clips in go ahead and put your pads in there's pretty much only one way you can put the brake pads in so this side is going to be a little bit harder since it's bars in the way we'll just go down like that boom one brake pad, and then to the back. Now I'm going to take the caliper, I'm going to scrape it a little bit with my brush, just get it nice and cleaned up. And then last but not least, I need to put this part of the caliper back on. Um, unfortunately, this is kind of far out, you can see it. 
So what I'm gonna have to do is loosen up the bleed, bleed valve right here. And I'm gonna have to squeeze some of this brake fluid out. And it's gonna be pretty gross, so have something to squeeze it into. Wear a glove. Let's crack this little valve. There we go. You can see it start flowing. So crack that little valve. We got brake fluid flowing out, and then I'm gonna use these big old clamps to push the piston back in. All right guys, got that on. Same thing here. I don't know the torque spec on these, so I'm just gonna go tight as hell. And then I should be done. I need to put a wheel spacer on because my wheels don't fit um, the current setup. But that's pretty much it. Um, let me know what you guys think. Leave your own tips and tricks down below and I'll catch you guys next time.